In this video, I'm going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. Let's say we have a function f that's continuous on the closed interval a comma b. Then we define, okay, we define a new function off of f uh, as follows. Let's say the new function is g of x. We define it to be integral from a to x f of t dt. That's how we define g of x. Then the following conditions must be true. The following statements are true. Then number one, g of x is continuous, continuous on the closed interval a, b. Number two, g of x is differentiable on the open interval a, b. And number three, g prime of x is equal to f of x. So these are the three conditions or conclusions. So what is it? Uh, we have a function f that's continuous on the closed interval a, b. We define a new function g of x, which is the integral from a, look a, a to x f of t dt. And if a function g of x is defined in such a way, then it should satisfy these three things. g of x is continuous on the closed interval. g of x is differentiable in the open interval a, b. And g prime of x is f of x. So let me go ahead and show it to you. So let's start off with g prime. So g prime of x, which is showing the, that the derivative exists and derivative is actually equal to f of x, uh, which is limit h approaches zero. That's the standard definition of derivative for a function g of x plus h minus g of x, all of it divided by h. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this g of x plus h minus g of x on the side, just the numerator. g of x plus h minus g of x. Now I'm going to use the definition of this function. Using the definition, g of x plus h is gonna be equal to integral a to x plus h f of t dt minus this g of x is going to be integral a to x f of t dt, okay? So this is just straightforward application of this definition. Now, I'm going to take this integral and break it into two pieces. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it as integral a to x f of t dt plus integral x to x plus h f of t dt. Please note that this is exactly the sum of these two integrals. I just broke it down into two pieces. Integral from a to x and then from x to x plus h. Then minus this integral, which is integral a to x f of t dt. Now note that this is negative and this is positive the same thing, same value. So they cancel each other out. So then I'm left with nothing but integral x to x plus h f of t dt. So in essence, my this limit becomes the following. g prime of x is nothing but limit h approaches zero and I'm going to write it as 1 over h instead of dividing by h is the same thing. Integral x to x plus h f of t dt. Now I'm going to prove this theorem in two different ways. Let's do the easy way first using the mean value theorem. So let's look at the function f of t. Okay, so f of t f of t is continuous 
on the closed interval x to x plus h, right? f of t is continuous on the closed interval. So that tells me that there is a point c in this closed interval x to x plus h which is going to be giving me the average value of the function over that interval. So there is a there is a value c in that interval so that such that f of c is going to be the average of the function in that interval which is to say you are probably more used to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a but look this actually is the average of the function in that interval so 1 over h okay 1 over h integral x to x plus h f of t dt is actually f of c and the mean value theorem ensures that now here is something you may not be familiar with uh, the average using integrals so let's say you have an integral from a to b um, f of x dx now if you take this integral and divide it by the length of the integral length of the uh, uh, interval over which you integrate you get the average value of the function okay average value of the function average value over that interval so this is exactly what we are doing here uh, my upper limit is x plus h my lower limit is x so from x plus h if i subtract x i am left with h so this is in essence uh, taking the derivative i mean finding the average of the function over this interval now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna apply the limit to both of them okay limit h approaches zero limit h approaches zero now look when i apply limit to the left side this is the same thing as this which is by the way g prime of x it is nothing but g prime of x so let me go ahead and write it Furthermore, so g prime of x, I'm not going to write this thing again, so it's the, it's the same thing. So it's going to be equal to limit h approaches 0. If h approaches 0 and c is in between x and x plus h, then what's going to happen to f of c? So this is your x and this is your x plus h. And C is somewhere in between, or it, even it could be on the boundary, it doesn't matter. If H gets closer and closer to zero, if H approaches zero, then what happens to this point? It's getting closer and closer to X. And in the limiting case, so as it gets closer and closer to X, C must have to move. C doesn't have a choice, right? Because in each of these intervals, the function is continuous. So in the limiting case, x is going to overlap with x plus h is going to overlap with x so c does not have a choice but to become or move towards h in the limit uh, move towards x in the limiting case as h goes to zero so what this means is that this thing limit h approaches zero f of c is going to be the same as limit h approach x sorry limit uh, c approaches x f of c remember i told you here c does not have a choice but to be squeezed in between x and x plus h if c is squeezed in between x and x plus h then as h goes to zero x plus h goes towards x so c does not have a choice but to move towards x and in the limiting case it will become x so i just found that g prime of x is equal to limit c approaches x f of c but limit c approach approaches x f of c is nothing but f of x oh by the way that is g prime of x i just showed that 
I just showed that g prime of x, okay, g prime of x is equal to f of x. This is this conclusion. And obviously, uh, the continuity and the differentiability. So, it's differentiable on the interval uh, a, comma, a comma b open interval. That means it's continuous in that interval too. Remember, if a function is differentiable on an interval, it's continuous there too. Uh, differentiability implies continuity. Now, for the boundary points a and b, those are continuous, okay? Th those are continuous and you could just plug in the value and you'll see. So, we just showed it uh, in one way, using the mean value theorem. Now, I'm going to show it using the uh, extreme value theorem. Again, so let's remember, remember this guy, okay? Remember this guy. G prime of x is equal to limit h approaches 0 into 1 over h times uh, integral x to x plus h f of t dt. Remember that. So now let's consider the function f, f of t. Okay. Um, is continuous on the closed interval x to x plus h. Okay. Look, there's the lower limit, there's the upper limit of the integration. x to x plus h is continuous in that interval. Then by extreme va value theorem, this function achieves maximum and minimum in that interval. So let's say we have two points, let's call them uh, K and L. Those are elements of X and X plus H such that K gives me the lower value of the function over that interval and L gives me the higher value of the function in that interval. Since uh, the function uh, achieves uh, extreme values in this interval, let's call these extreme values m, the lowest value. So m must be less than or equal to f of t in that interval, less than or equal to the highest value or maximum value in that interval. I can do that. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take integral of this with respect to t integral of this with respect to t from x to x plus h okay from x to x plus h and x to x plus h dt okay so i do the integration now integral this is a constant so this is going to give me m times x plus h minus x is going to be less than or equal to integral x to x plus h f of t dt less than or equal to m times the same thing x plus h minus x. Now if I do the simplification, I get the following m times h is less than or equal to integral x to x plus h f of t dt is less than or equal to m times h. Now, h is a non-zero value. So, I can divide both sides, okay? Uh, I mean, all sides by h. So, I'm going to divide by h, divide by h, divide by h. So, these h's are going to cancel. That's going to give me m is less than or equal to 1 over h times integral x to x plus h f of t dt. Now remember, this is nothing but g prime of x, okay? That's what, that's what we found above, right, right here, look. g prime of x is this guy, okay? So it's showing up in this inequality which is less than or equal to m, the uppercase m. Now, for some value k, it reaches the minimum value. So, f of k is going to be less than or equal to 1 over h integral x to x plus h. f of t dt 
is less than or equal to f of um, l okay because l was the uh, value that gives you the highest value now what happens if you apply limit uh, to this inequality so let's kind of analyze it on the side so i'm gonna apply limit to this right now so if i apply limit h approaches zero so limit h approaches zero f of k and limit h approaches zero 1 over h integral x to x plus h f of t dt look uh, the kind of thing we have seen for the mean value theorem similar kind of thing is going to happen here as h goes to zero and k is sandwiched between x and x plus h x and x plus h k is somewhere here okay this is your k now if this x plus h start moving this way because h is approaching zero and this function is continuous on the entire interval what's going to happen k doesn't have a choice but move in this direction move in this direction the closer uh, x plus h gets to x the closer k gets meaning that k is sandwiched between x and x plus h so in the limiting case what's going to happen this inequality less than or equal to is not going to have a choice the less than portion has to go away it has to be exactly equal because k does not have a choice okay so k is gonna be sandwiched between x and x plus h and sort of like by squeezing k is gonna force it to be exactly equal to this uh, uh, limit which is limit h approaches 0 1 over h integral x to x plus h f of t dt so this shows that oh this this limit h approaches 0 1 over h integral x to x plus h f of t dt is nothing but this limit right this limit means um, i'm going to write it out limit h approaches 0 f of k now by the way this is going to be the same as limit limit k remember it's sandwiched it doesn't have a choice but to move to x limit f of k but limit k approaches x f of k is nothing but f of x f of x oh by the way this thing is the same as g prime of x okay so we just showed that for this lower case g prime of x is f of x and with a similar argument this guy um, on the on the other side is, is it doesn't have a choice this l is also sandwiched between x and x plus h because the extreme value theorem ensures that so now when x plus h moves towards x uh, it doesn't have a choice but the limit uh, h approaches zero f of l is gonna be equal to limit h approaches zero uh, one over h integral x to x plus h f of t dt that's what it's gonna be now this is nothing but g prime of x so g prime of x is gonna be limit h approaches zero f of l which is gonna be the same as limit l approaches x f of l that is nothing but f of x so we just showed that uh, g prime of x is equal to f of x uh, now we have shown it in two different ways one is using the mean value theorem another is using the uh, uh, extreme value theorem so now let's go ahead and uh, review what we did this is a lot of information so let me go ahead and kind of uh, summarize what we talked about 
f is a continuous function on the closed interval a b and we define g of x as such that it's an integral from a to x f of t dt if that is the case then the three conclusions must be true g is continuous on the closed interval g is differentiable in the open interval and g prime of x is equal to f of x and we have shown it in two different ways using the mean value theorem and using the extreme value theorem this is a lot of information so if you don't follow it along that's understandable uh, watch it a couple of times okay or maybe do some uh, googling uh, online you may have other resources that would help you uh, if you see it from a different perspective, that may help you. So please make sure to do that. Uh, and ask me questions, of course, right? Now, uh, at the end, what I want you to do, uh, of course, you're going to get an idea about the, how the theorem is proved, but I want you to remember these conclusions, okay? You need to know the conclusions. Once you start using these conclusions, uh, in solving problems, then you will start to get a slowly get a good feel or good understanding of the fundamental theorem for calculus part one. Uh, you will not only understand it slowly, but you start to appreciate the power of this uh, uh, theorem. Okay, I hope that this discussion was helpful. Thank you very much.